So thank you guys for joining another episode of the Key Chat. Today, my special guest is Gucci the Great, and we have been trying to link up for a long time, so I'm super happy to talk with her. And she's a gentlewoman with many styles, an activist, fashion designer, and wardrobe stylist. And she also has a nonprofit, so I just want to chat with her. We're going to talk about how she started her fashion brand, her passion, what inspires her. So we're just going to chop it up. How are you doing today? Doing good in yourself. Blessed to be here. Doing good. I'm glad we finally connected. So, like I said, I know you have this fashion line. So, I want to just go ahead and start on just what inspired you. How did you get started? How long have you had an interest in fashion? Um, I had an interest in fashion my my whole life, honestly. Uh, since um elementary school, I used to for like talent shows and stuff. I used to choreograph the dances and stuff like that. Help out with the talent shows, and um, I. I don't like to look like everybody else. Like, I like to look different. Like, I don't, you know, like, I don't want to feel like everybody else. So I used to put, like, uh, fabric paint and regular paint and bleach and cut up my shirts and stuff like that. So uh, my other colleagues and stuff, they started to like it, and, as well as the teachers. So I started doing, um, helping me making the clothes and stuff for the talent shows and stuff in the school. And also, I wanted to branch off and doing that for block parties um, in Brooklyn, New York, as well in East New York, where I grew up at. So um, that's kind of where the first, my first little dip in fashion came along. And then from there, um, I kind of like really just played basketball for uh, most of my years. But mm -hmm. um, I still like made custom items and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, where it take pictures to, or just to get other people feedback. And when I say I was about... When I was about a teenager, my grandmother, she uh, taught me like the basics of the sewing machine. Uh, she told me, you know, this, she told me by help uh, teaching me how to take a shirt apart, putting it back together. Um, if I want to cut a shirt out on a piece of fabric, you know, how to take it apart, place it on the fabric, you know, cut it out, you know, based on the size and stuff like that. So she kind of taught me like uh, the basics. So it's like when I finally decide to you know, pursue my, you know, pers pursue my clothing line, I already, you know, I already was kind of ahead of the game, even though I stopped into uh, I stopped in 2017, and then I relaunched again in 2019. Okay, and you're from Brooklyn, right? Yes. So I know you said like you like to be different. So if you had to like describe like your style, or just maybe like how you come up with it, though, like how would you describe it? Like just like your everyday style of dress, or like how would you put it into words? Um. It's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just me. I mean, I don't know no other, you know, other way to put it. Um, I mean, like some days, you know, um, I've been I've been working on uh, not wearing a fedora so much. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's my, you know, that's my signature. You know, but um, I've been trying to get away from that. So it's like my new morning routine and my new morning stuff to start my day or to go out uh, and uh, throughout the day. If my routine is kind of different. Like I'll probably throw in a fitted, a snapback, a trucker hat, a regular hat, you know, like I'm, so right now I'm kind of, you know, try something different. Like, you know, I want to switch it up again. I felt like I did the fedoras. I did it, you know, I did it all last year. I, I got over 50 of them and I feel like this year I want to <laughs> do something different. So, right. you know, just trying to branch off. Um, if you look on my Instagram and stuff, you'll see that my last photo shoot, uh, you know, I gave them, I gave them a little something different. I didn't give them what I usually give. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the fashion icon legend Andre Leon Talley just passed away yesterday. And of course, his style was just so eclectic and it was iconic, you know, and he has such a, 
a wide range of just the things that he did working with Vogue and Anna Wintour and everything. So who are some of like, if you have any, who are some of your fashion icons, some of your inspirations or some of the style people that you look at coming up, you know, just in maybe music or fashion or just any of the maybe celebrities or just some people who may have inspired you in your everyday life, whose styles, whose style has inspired you? Um, honestly, nobody's style have inspired mm-hmm. me, but um, as I go on with my career and um, I start to look at um, other people and other things now, uh, like Patina, like sometimes I go on Tiana Teller page, I look at mm-hmm. her, I scroll up and down from her, her kid to her husband, you know, I look at stuff like that. Um, I just started uh, watching, um, what is this called, uh, Next Fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, with upcoming fashion designers and stuff. So actually it's a couple of them in there that I really, you know, that I really, really like, like, you know, like that's, that stood out to me more than other people that's already at the top or on their way to the top. Pardon me, excuse me. And mm-hmm. um, next fashion. Yes. I That's, that's my show at this point in time. Like <laughs> I've really, <laughs> I've really been enjoying it. So um, yeah, I don't really have any people that I looked up to honestly. And I mean, if I had to say somebody, I guess I'll say my grandma. Mm, okay. So how was your grandmother? Like, how was her style? You know, they got the classy grandmas, they got the traditional. My grandma, she's she's from the country. She's real country. She's just regular. Um, Mm. You wouldn't even think my grandmother could create what, you know, what she create. She's done, made uh, prom dresses, sheets, curtains, everything Mm. you can think of. She done, she done made it all. Hats, she done made everything, like literally everything. And if you see her, you look at her, we talked though, you wouldn't even think she's capable of doing any of that. She's just so regular, calm, laid back. She's quiet. Mm-hmm. Do you sew? Um, yes and no. Yes mm-hmm. and no. Um, I, I don't do a lot of sewing, but, you know, certain things. If I do uh, one-on-one pieces, like right now for 2022, I, um, I told all my followers that my first two months until my new collection drop, I'll be giving them nothing but one-on-one pieces. So mm-hmm. from this month until next month, I'll be doing a lot more sewing than I did last year. Um, I did a lot of sewing already. Um, I actually just got a new sewing machine on Sunday. So I'm actually excited about that. Mm, okay. Okay. So how do you find your clients? Or do they find you? Like, how does the process work for you to find people, you know, that you style for? Um. So basically, uh, when I first, when I first kind of started, like, I uh, I'll make posts and stuff as if like, you know, um, who's, who's, who's interested, like free photo, you basically get free, you get free photos, you get style for free. Like, you know, basically just people to experiment on, um, should I say. So mm-hmm. uh, basically started like that. So, you know, from there, they tell a friend, they tell a friend, they tell a friend. And that's basically how that went. So I basically started doing my work for free and then it wound up paying off. So like when you get a client, how do you assess how you choose the style? And the, do you ever get someone and like, do you go by, basically maybe the history of what you may see in pictures of how they dress or do you get that person try and feel a vibe and come off what you interpret from them what look what, what look good on them or do you go by what they wear generally and kind of spice it up like how do you you know pick the right style for them? okay so basically um I basically I have a regular conversation with them. Like I'll talk to them just like I'm talking. Like you know how how me and you talking. We'll talk. I'll ask about their day. You know, like I'll ask regular normal conversations as if I'm not. You know that as if I'm not even trying to process how I want to style them, but I really am. But it's throwing them off because um, what I've come to learn is that like when certain people um is stuck to a style or you know they just stuck in this like comfort zone, you got to kind of break them out of it. So um, mm-hmm. I basically um give them give them conversation in which they're distracted in which they want to trust me enough when I do I'm like hey I think I see you in this or hey such such and such or I have a conversation I'll be like hey I'm on Instagram or I'm on uh, Pinterest and I'd be like hey I think this will look nice on you and they'll be mm-hmm. like no and I'd be like listen I used to dress like this and I'll show a picture of what I used to dress like now look at me now you know what I'm saying like uh so I kind of give them like the confidence and stuff like that so it all depends like on the conversation that I have with the person per se Mm. so it's like okay like based on what you're saying I feel like you feel like you got to fit in with society so on this shoe right here we're going to make sure you don't look nothing like what society say you got to look like you know so right. stuff like that mm. so have you ever faced any challenges you know working on your brand you know as a minority woman have you ever faced any type of challenges or anything um when I first started in 2016 when I uh just was doing uh living life apparel um the reason why I stopped because when I went into it, it I just felt like um, you know, I was popular. 
um, everybody loved me and I just felt like I was going to have so much support and my, you know, my brand was just going to skyrocket. And it was just like, it was none of that, you know, everybody, oh yeah, yeah, start your line, do this, do that. And it's like, when I started there, it was like no support, nobody sharing my pictures, nobody liked my pictures. It was just like, mm. you know, like I, I was, I was disappointed, but more, more disappointed yeah. than myself because it's my business. I'm running it. And you know what I'm saying? Like I depended on somebody else to help me be successful and I have to help myself be successful. So, you know, um, mm. So when I stopped, when I stopped it in 2017, I took that time from 2017 to April 1st, 2019. And I just, um, I got the right vendors. I started practicing more. I just started doing research. I started looking at the other people in my community that also have clothing lines. Um, I, uh, I'm looking at, ha I'm looking up hashtags. I'm looking, you know, I'm looking up everything. So I was like, I, but when I came back this time, I came back strong and I came back ready. So I didn't mm -hmm. want to take that step again you know i didn't i didn't want to go in there misleading myself uh again so leading myself uh again so you know that was my biggest challenge that i i faced mm. so how do you stay motivated you know what i'm saying especially as a creative like you said i think that's something that unfortunately a lot of people share in common when they have you know they have platforms of creativity that the people who you think is gonna ride for you or support you crickets you know <laughs> they don't even like a and even though at the end of the day you build that strength and realize it doesn't technically matter. It's still, you know, you, you can't help but notice it. So it takes a lot of motivated. So how do you, you know, remove all the noise so that you can stay motivated and keep moving forward? So um, um, during that time too, like I was going through a lot of stuff like with work and, you know, relationships and stuff like that. So I kind of, I, I kind of wasn't in the right mental space. So um, I kind of took some time for like self-love, self self-discipline, self self-respect and stuff like that. Like I look at, I took a lot of time to myself to learn myself because I was just on a emotional roller coaster that I just didn't, you know, that I, that I wasn't used to that I didn't like. So I had to right. make sure to fix that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, that's basically, you know, how I like really uh, like, you know, got my strength and I started cutting people off. I started looking, you know, without no, without no, no warning, not telling them they did nothing to me, you know, but, you know, but I let them know it's nothing personal. I still love you. I wish you the best, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not the right. best fit for me. I just started, you know, looking at the people around me, like, okay, like every time I'm with you, I'm drunk all day. Or every time I'm with you, we get to argue with somebody, you know what I'm saying? Or when you're around, you be saying little slick stuff and you say it all the time, but I think that you're serious because you say it all the time, you know? So I just started looking at little stuff like that, you know? And I was like, okay, like, all right, I don't need, I, I don't need this around me if I want to go to the next level. I can't, I can't have this around me. I can't afford to have this around me if I want to go to the next level. So it was like, yeah, heard and I miss these people to today, but it's like, some, you know, not everybody could go with you. Some people come in your life to teach you a lesson and, you know, no matter how strong the memories are, the love is, you just got to take that lesson and move on to the next. You can't dwell and you can't do stuff like that. So it's like kind of like, um, you know, going through all that and just like people telling me, no, doors getting closed in my face and stuff like that. Like that, that was more or less the, um, all the motivation I need. So that's really what keeps me going. Like when somebody tell me no, or even if I you know, send it to a celebrity and they be like, or they turn it down or say they don't like it. Like, you know, that's motivation for me. Okay. Like, all right, so now I got to step it up a little bit or now I'm going to reach out to somebody, you know, it, it, it motivates me. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't. Yeah. So it's like being told no, that kind of motivates me. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. Do you mind if I ask you how old you are? I'm 28. Oh, okay. Okay. That's really good. You know, that you're doing it at such a young age. So I know obviously in addition to being a fashion designer and a wardrobe stylist, when I was looking at the information on your website and everything, it also said that you're an activist. So how do you, I mean, I know you do have your nonprofit, which is the Self-Paid Bosses Entertainment. So I want to hear some more about your nonprofit, what made you start it, and what's the whole focus of the nonprofit? Okay, so um, to be honest, uh, when I started the nonprofit, uh, well, we're going to get, we're going to go back before I started the nonprofit. So uh, <laughs> Back in high school, um, I had started a group called Self Pay Bosses. Mm -hmm. um, I used to um, host parties and stuff like that. You know, like we was we high were, school. Yeah, high school. Wow. So we uh we were some misguided kids. 
Um, so I, you know, I'm gonna be honest, you know, we were some misguided kids. Um, so being that, you know, like I was on a different path, you know, and I'm just, you know, finding myself and loving myself more and, and understanding, you know, this game called life. Um, I decided, you know, like this was something negative, like, you know what I'm saying? Like we kind of destroyed the community. So I want to take that name and I want to just like, I, I, I gave myself like, you know what I'm saying? Like my people probably thought this about me and now they don't think that way no more because they see the direction I'm going. So that's kind of what I did with the self-paid bosses. So when I created Living Life Apparel, I said, you know what? I'll make this a nonprofit as well. So that's mm -hmm. how I did that. And it's like, even the, before the nonprofit, like I was doing a lot for the homeless and kids and the, and the youth and like elderly people like that. Um, I mm -hmm. always, that always been me since I was a kid, like four or five years old. Uh, my aunt and my mother and stuff, they got pictures and videos of me just always being a little more advanced than my age, you know, trying to baby the babies, helping the old people and stuff like yeah. that. So it's like, uh, that's kind of where that went from. Um, during the pandemic, when the pandemic first started, um, I had me, a couple of my colleagues, um, we went out to North uh, Penn Station, which is in New Jersey and New York mm -hmm. Penn Station. Uh, we gave out food every weekend. We gave out clothes mm -hmm. every weekend. Um, I made posts, the people that, um, and food, you know, extra food or extra clothes. I went and picked it up. Or I had my, asked my mom, can she pick it up? She'll drop it to me. You know, I'll be in my house. I'll separate it and I'll go give it out. Um, I had my sister with me at a point in time. She's nine years old. I bought her out with me to give her that experience as well. You know, to let her see, like, you know, like, you got to do the right thing. Or, you know, you know, just, you know, kind of show her, re you know, reality besides what they right. uh, show on TV. And then, excuse me and on the internet so it's like that's really was my you know motivation it's like um also as a youth like I made a lot of mistakes I was arrested uh you know I did a I, I was going down the wrong path so it's like I feel yeah. like if I had somebody like me in my life with the mindset that I have now or you know or seen somebody like me that's that was in my neighborhood or my area I would have made different choices because the moment that I seen something different that's when I made a difference with myself mm. wow so that's good is that one of your shirts that you're wearing uh yeah okay. yeah oh okay so what was the inspiration behind the title of living life apparel um okay so uh i used to work construction 2015 um i had left my security job and i started mm -hmm. doing construction um it was this uh, man named keith he's still good friends to this day um we used to talk every day at 12 o'clock on lunch we go get lunch we go sit in the projects i was across the street from where we was working and we'll just talk, just eat and talk and talk. You know, we talk about, you know, his past, my past, the youth nowadays, how they misguided and stuff like that. It's like, so basically all our uh, conversations every day was like basically revolving around people wake up every day and they just alive and they're not really living life. You know, they just alive because they're not being they self. They're afraid to be their true self. They, you know, they're afraid to be judged. They're afraid to be bullied or laughed at, you know? So they rather tell they self a reassuring lie then, you know, then to tell myself the truth, like, this is not who I am. So, um, you know, just going like that when I, um, I had went through sexual harassment at that job. So, um, that's another reason why I had started, um, uh, my company. I'm like, you know, I can't, I can't work for, you know, I, I can't work for nobody. I can't be going yeah. through stuff like this, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was, it was, it, it, it was a lot behind it. Uh, but so when I named it, I said, you know, um, I was originally going to name it self pay bosses. Then I said, no, I don't want to name it that. So then I was like, you know what, this is what we talk about, you know, every day. And it's like, I look forward to those conversations. So I'm like, you know what, that's what I'm going to name my brand. Mm, wow. Now I know like earlier you mentioned, you know, there's some people that you may look at like Tiana Taylor. Are there any like wish list people who you would like to style for? And it doesn't have to be a celebrity, just anybody. Is there anyone in particular that you may have not necessarily interacted with, but just looking at them from afar, like you looking at them like, yeah, I could really like hook them up, like really, you know, bring them out. Only person I really style that's a celebrity celebrity is Tiana Teller. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody else that I'd rather style, it'd be upcoming, upcoming uh, people, like whether they're actresses, rappers, you know, whatever their profession may be, like I feel like. I want to work with the underdogs and sometimes I believe the underdogs is better than the people that's on top. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. So what's next for your brand, you know, with living life? Like a, you have like a, I must be a Brooklyn thing. Like you just seem so seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> so like what's up next for you? You know, I just feel like you really got it going on with the nonprofit, just the experiences you've had at a young age. So what's next for living life? Uh, so next, um, um, I usually do like a lot of uh, like sweatsuits and, um, you know, a lot of uh, streetwear. Um, mm -hmm. 
So uh, now I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to go into the path that I originally wanted to go into. Uh, but like I said, I gave myself limitations too, not feeling like people wasn't going to support me. So basically what I did was I did the shirts, I did the sweatsuits, I did the hats, I did the fitteds to, to uh, gain my followers, to gain the respect, to show, you know, to show my credibility for, you know, something so simple. So now with my upcoming, I'm going to do a lot of new stuff like drawers and shoes and stuff like that. So I'm about mm -hmm. to give it a, it's going to be a whole new turnaround. So that's okay. why, you know, it's a little process for the for some of the stuff to come and stuff. So that's why I'm going to do a lot of one-on-ones from, um, from January until February. Until okay. The now, do you only work with people locally or like all over the place? I'm all over the place. Okay, cool, cool. So what would you say to inspire somebody? So let's say somebody tunes in and, you know, they're a youth as well. They have aspirations to go into fashion and they really need some motivation. Like you mentioned, sometimes as entrepreneurs, you know, the people who you think are going to support you, applaud for you, they really don't and it can bring you down. And I think sometimes people who don't even get to the stage where you're at, they just have the idea in their mind, but they're already feeling kind of down because they feel like they're not going to get support, you know, because sometimes people talk themselves out of their dreams before it even comes into fruition just by sharing it with somebody, you know, before they do it. And then they'll hear a bunch of naysayers, hey, you know, bring it down. So what would you say to inspire that person who just, that created, they want to go ahead and follow their dreams? What would you say to inspire that person? they want to go ahead and follow their dreams what would you say to inspire that person uh personally i'll say you know don't be afraid to be you you can't like you know no disrespect to your parents your um your grandparents your cousins your friends anything but your dream is your dream you can't let nobody stop you just because someone may feel like it's stupid or they may feel like you need to do this first um you can't you can't let you can't let somebody else deter you from what you want to do because if you do that, you're basically just living their dream. You know what I'm saying? You're not living, you know, you're not living your dream. So um, I definitely recommend the youth to, you know, no matter how hard how hard it is, and it's okay to be yourself. Like, if you want to wear, if everybody's wearing skinny jeans and you want to wear baggy jeans, go put on some baggy jeans and, you know, dress it up and do what you do because that's your style. And eventually, you know, people may make fun of you, but the people that's making fun of you, that's the people that really like it and wish that they could do what you're doing and they wish that they could be you and they wish that they could be as brave as you. So. Most of the time with bullies, bullies are just, you know, people that admire you if you ask me. So ignore the yeah. bullies. If you got any bullies, keep doing what you're doing. You know, uh, get good grades, stay in school, take what you could get from school, apply it to everyday life. If you play a sport, if you play anything and you're still trying to pursue like your own business at a young age, you learn lessons in sports too. You learn patience, you learn teamwork, you learn a lot of stuff that you can apply to everyday life. So for the youth, I just say, you know, just do what you got to do and don't let nobody stop you. Mm. Now, of course, we're living in a pandemic age, you know, people may be going through some financial difficulties or whatever, but some people are getting more comfortable getting out. So what is your advice on just styling in general? Sometimes people think in order to look good, you got to put a lot of dollars behind those clothing. Uh, things. So walk us through just some tips on somebody on how they can really look fly, like just things they can do to spice up their wardrobe but not necessarily break the bank? Um, people, all right, so for the people who money is, like, you know, tight, like, say you want to go out and you got to be casual. Um, I could say, well, I wish I, I wish I, I wish you, I wish I was ready for this question so I could show y'all a few examples. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, say, like, okay, we're going to go back to the baggy jeans. Uh, say you got some jeans, say you got some shoes that you want to wear and your jeans is kind of baggy. You could take a, you could take a scrunchie you can wrap it around the ankle and you mm. can tuck it and you can make it look like a skinny jean and you won't be able to tell. Or you can, or you can pinch it from the, Jesus, <laughs> I wish I could show you guys. You can pinch it from the side and mm -hmm. um, um, you know how like sometimes you buy pants and it's rolled already? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can pinch it from the side if it's too big. You fold it to the back and you roll from top to bottom and when time you finish, it'll look like your pants came like that. You won't know how the pants look um you know get you a if you don't got a button up get you a you know a little t-shirt iron it make sure it's a right throw your little blazer on if you got a fedora you could get in touch you know get to a fedora throw a fedora on the fedora, fedora helps a lot of outfits if i take this hat off and put it on the fitted i look like a totally different person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So I unfortunately cannot really wear a lot of hats depending on how my hair is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, definitely. Um, but this definitely um if people uh, also um you don't gotta uh go to expensive stores to go shopping. Um you definitely could shop at uh well for the men, you could shop at men and ladies, you could shop at Boohoo, uh Boohoo, they have good cheap clothes and it come fast. Mm -hmm. You can shop at ASOS, they have good cheap clothes and it come fast. Um uh, Fashion Nova, uh, men mm -hmm. and women. Um you can if you're unsure of how you know you want to put something together, look at look at the models, Google a picture, like you know, Google something that's in your head. Like, you know, you don't you don't always have to, you know. Uh, like go spend that extra money or go book a stylist or you know unless it's something right. important like for your birthday or a promise something something like that but it's different you know it's 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 real simple like it it all depends on what you do like if I stand there right now I got a sweatpants and a hoodie and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I could walk into a store and with this hat on and I'll be talked to different now if I walk in there with a do rag and a hat they go and treat me and, t and talk to me different so I, I feel like you know it's just on how you put it together and it's like it'd be stuff that's so simple like people walk around with hoodies and sweatpants all day yeah all day, every day every day it's just, right. it's just simply how you put it um right what do you think is the correlation between a person's fashion style and confidence because obviously like I said, clothes okay. man you know and obviously man yeah. women too but what's the correlation because i just feel like you know, a good outfit, you can't tell you can't tell a person nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, you know, you right, feel like outfit, you. <laughs> right, they got that feel good about themselves. You know what I'm saying? So what what do you think is a correlation between fashion and self-confidence? Um, so I can't I'll double back to what I said. Once you believe in yourself and you comfortable with you and you know you love it and you had a point in your life with you, uh you don't care about what nobody say, you don't care about no, how it, nobody feels. So you could put on anything, you put on something that don't match. And right. you may feel like the most beautiful person in the world, the most handsome person in the world. And it don't matter what nobody else said. That's just, and that's your fashion. You know what I'm saying? Who am I to tell you that, that that's not fashion. That's ugly. You know what I'm saying? That's you. That's who you are. That's your fashion. So I, you know, it all depends on the person. Like but I, the, the confidence, it has a, it definitely has a lot to do with it. You got to believe in yourself. You know, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to believe in you. Nobody else is going to support you. Nobody else is going to support your dream. Because if you're down yourself, why do you expect somebody else? To believe in you so you gotta you gotta have that confidence and i feel like once you have that confidence you know you could look in the closet and you could get oh all right i wore this last year and i wore this last week they ain't seen this in a while you know i'm gonna I'm put this together and you'll have that confidence other than all right they see me in this picture then i gotta go buy a new pair of pants i gotta go you know i gotta go buy a new shirt because i got a picture in this already they see me in this already so i feel like once you got that confidence and you love yourself enough like you're not gonna worry about that you could go in the closet and put an outfit together and it looked like you just went to Macy's or something and bought it. And they, you go, you walk in the spot, they, oh, what's that? What you got on? You look nice. And you know, stuff right. like that. So I just, confidence is definitely, you definitely need a lot of confidence. Um, even right now, I speak for myself. Like I'm still, um, I'm still giving myself more confidence. I'm still learning to be more confident. I'm, I'm way more confident than I used to be. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not at the level, I'm not at the level where I want to be or supposed to be at. And I'm just going to keep going. Like even talking on podcasts, like, I told myself I got to get out there. I got to get on podcasts because I can't be this person with these uh with these beautiful brands and nobody you know nobody know about them. If I'm sitting there being quiet, like it's not it's the, the story's not going to tell itself. Like I got to get out there. I got to I got to make myself uncomfortable until I'm comfortable. Right, right, right. So one of the things that I talk about a lot on the show is self love. So just a lot of things that you said, you know, just from things that you did when you were young, how you you know overcame that trying to inspire other people of course doing this fashion line is obviously something that is very great so what how has self-love played a role though and you know just you being who you are being unique being different and saying hey I'm going to own who I am and also inspire others you know just to be confident and to hold their head high and be proud of what they're wearing you know something that sometimes people take for granted because you know, a lot of times people feel down. They just think that they aren't even worthy in general. You know what I'm saying? And that is a reflection of sometimes how a person really does carry themselves. So how has self-love just played a role in your life in general? Um, Blessed. Uh, self-love, self -love, it, it did a lot for me. Um, It gave me a whole three, like a, literally a whole 360 times two, um, you know, before I learned, you know, to love myself, I was looking for love and because um, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Like I was 
Um, I, was, I was looking for somebody else to love me. I was looking for somebody else to, you know, fulfill these empty voids. And I was doing nothing but hurting myself because I'm giving these people expectations or I'm believing the dream that, they, that they're telling me. And it's, and it's only a dream, even though if they mean it, it's only a dream because I can't receive it because I don't, I don't, I don't have that for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't be mad that you don't love me and you don't know how to love me because I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't love me. I'm still learning how to love me. So I can't be mad that, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or you're doing this, or I can't be mad that you don't understand what I'm saying because I don't understand, you know, I don't understand what I'm saying. So it's like, I just had to like understand that. So like that time, like I was really broken. I was messed up. I, you know, I had a therapist, I had a therapist and everything. I, 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 was, I was going through it but yeah. excuse me uh but you know so it's like self-love it, it, it's it's really important like it, it does a lot and it's like once you love yourself you're able to you know like the people around you family friends a stranger in a in a in a club in a bar walking down the street in a park you in a, a conversation with them you'll be able to point out some things that you know and give them advice because you've been you know what i'm saying you can see you see yourself in them you, you've been there before so even if they take the advice or not you can still give that you still get you can still give that knowledge because like i, I said I, i'm the type of person like i learn from other people's mistakes like so i'd rather see you go through it and like i'm not gonna do it yeah. then you know what i'm saying then i see you go through it and like you touch the stove and it burns you and your hand you know your hand is bleeding i'm not gonna go touch that stove i'm not touching the stove after you i don't want that to happen to me you know what i'm saying like i learned from your mistake i'm not gonna continue to touch the stove after you got burnt that's that's ridiculous so right. i just i just feel like self-love is very very important i mean um it took me it took me a while you know hi it's your girl danny parks listen if you are having any type of suicidal thoughts, if you're having any type of mental health crisis, I want you to dial the new suicide hotline 988. That's right. It's only three numbers and it's 988. You can call this or text it to be connected to a crisis counselor where they can help you through your situation in that moment. Once again, that number is 988 and that's it. All right. I'll see y'all later. Very important. I mean, um, it took me, it took me a while, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, um, you, you gotta say, let me, let me go off topic. You gotta say a lot of positive things to yourself, you yeah. know, um, cause you know, most times like we hear negative things, even as a kid, you get told you a bad kid. You don't know what the word bad means, but once you find out what it means, you start becoming bad because this is all, you know, this is all that you heard. This is all that was embedded in your head. So I just, just basically like reprogramming my mind. I started listening to Les Brown. I started listening to E.T. I started listening to Oprah. I started listening to Steve Harvey. I started I started reading books. I haven't read a book in God knows when, but I started picking up books. I just, you know, I wanted to be better. I wasn't liking the mindset. I was and I wasn't feeling like myself. I was feeling like I didn't belong here. I was feeling lost. So I just, you know, I, I had to figure it out. So it's like, once I figured it out, I'm like, okay, I got it. Like, I, like, I got it. Like, this is, this, this is it. Like, and this feels good. This feels amazing. Now, like, mm -hmm. I just felt the difference. I felt the change in my body. I felt the energy. I felt, I felt the, the air felt different. Everything just felt different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I felt like I was born again. And mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was just wonderful. So, like, even my collection, Living Life for Peril, uh, some stages that I went through, like, I, I, I sit down and I have a lot of conversation with myself. I got many books. I sit there. I write a question. If I got a question to my to myself, I mean, I got an answer right uh, right then and there. But I'll come back to that book and I'll, you know, I'll answer it later and, and stuff like that. Like, even to this day, like, I'm still, I'm still working on me. I'm still, I'm still a work in progress. So, um, right. but you definitely got to, you definitely got to, you definitely got to learn to love yourself. It's, it's really, it's really important because if you don't, you're going to, you're going to allow a lot of people to walk over. You're going to allow a lot of people to mistreat you. You're going to accept things that you shouldn't accept, you know, and, you, and, and it's not okay. It's never, it's never okay. It's never okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree with everything that you said. Self-love is just a few, for, a lot of people think self-love, they mix it up with self-care, I think, which to me, that's two entirely different yeah. things. Self-care actual literal you know getting your nails yeah. done yeah. is <laughs> work it's deep, but that's, that's internal like you know what i'm saying that's something yeah. that you can't you can't play with that you can't let you can't let yourself or anybody else damage that that's something that right. has to be on 120 at every time it can't be on 100 it has to be on 120 every day when you wake up you got to show up for yourself even when you don't want to show up like because ain't nobody else going to show up for you these people that you blame for you being like this and stuff like you know what i'm saying it happened, you gotta let it go. What you gonna you gonna use it as fuel or you gonna let it hurt you? And that's right. 
just feel like that's the most people problem. That's that they be in their head like, oh, this happened to me when I was a kid. This happened to me. And they still do well on it at 30, 40, 50. And it's like, yeah. you got to let that go because, you know, you're not doing nothing for hurting yourself. The pe- the person who did it, they live in a, you know, they live in a carefree life. They, they happy. Oh, yeah. They probably literally live in life and you just waking up alive every day. You allow somebody else to control your life that should not have no control over your life. Right, 100% right, 100%. So lastly, I want to ask you another thing that I noticed on your website, it mentioned pop-ups. So I think not everyone is familiar with pop-up shops. And obviously after COVID, a lot of people, you know, became entrepreneurs. Some people who were entrepreneurs prior to COVID who, you know, they were trying to find ways to get their name brand out there to still stay, you know, working when everybody was stuck in or just had unconventional ways. So can you just share with people who are unfamiliar with what pop-ups are, just inform them what the pop-up shops are and also the value of pop-up shops for entrepreneurs? Because I think pop-ups have been an amazing thing for people since this whole pandemic has started. Okay, so um, there's a lot of value. So to be honest, before I say this, I, 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 I really don't do pop-up shops. This will be my first pop-up shop and mm-hmm. it's actually a mandatory pop-up shop and that's the only reason why mm-hmm. I'm in it. But I do attend a lot of pop-up shops and even though I don't be in the pop-up shops, I go to the pop-up shops for the same reason that the vendors, um, you know, break tables and stuff at the pop-up shops. But a pop-up shop is basically you have people that sell cookies, makeups, whatever their job is. They sell CDs, they're a DJ, whatever they have going, you have this event space and you have different tables set up. It's um, like a fleet, like a fleet market. I will kind of compare right. it to. Um, right. And you have they have their brand, they have what they sell, they um, they either they buy they sell or they have somebody working with them, and you know they're interacting with the people that come in. You um, just like a, it's like a um, a salesperson. You come in through the door, you know, and you looking around. They see you looking. They make it come get your attention. Come um, let you know what they got going on. You you don't have to buy anything. You know what I'm saying, but. Even if you don't buy anything, just interacting with somebody, they know now they now they know what your business is about. Now they know your name. So they, it may not be their cup of tea, but now they can go home and they can be like, you know, I went to this pop-up shop and I seen this brand and this looked like something that you'll wear. Or this or they they had some soap that I think that you'll like, you know, that wasn't that wasn't me because my skin was sensitive or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it helps it, it brings more awareness to your bills and you get to network with the other people that's there you, and uh, you get the network with the customers. Like I stated before, the customers get to, um, the customers spread the word, the other uh, other entrepreneurs that you at the pop-up shop with, they get, to, they get to spread the word. You guys get to exchange business cards. Um, sometimes you guys can even do collabs. You never know who you meet there. You never know, you never know anything. You may be doing something that somebody didn't know how to start or was interested in or, or, or vice versa and you, and things could just go wonderful there. But there's de- definitely a lot of benefits to a pop-up shop. It's not about the money. If you ask me, it's not about making the money. I feel like the money is a bonus. It's a plus, but it's all about the networking and getting your name out there. Mm, right, right. So I've definitely had an amazing conversation with you. Before we end everything, though, tell everybody how they can connect with you on social media, how they can find your website. You know, they may want to reach out to you for some styling. So go ahead and give everybody all your contact information. Um, all right, so I'm gonna make it real simple. If you just go on Google and you type in G-U-C-C-K-I-I-D-A-G-R-E-A-T, all my information to pop up from my website, all my social medias and all articles and podcasts that I've been in, everything will pop up. Um, if you type in Living Life Apparel and Google as well, everything will pop up as well. We on Pinterest, we on Twitter, we on Google, we on LinkedIn. I'm literally on every platform for myself and both of my businesses. So you just type it in on Google, whatever you have. You click it and we can connect. And I'm always open to collab. I'm always open to do uh, nonprofit things or um, if you're not too far, you know, I'll travel, we travel, we do stuff. So I'm always looking to collab and connect. So anybody that's looking at this, if you want to connect, you want to collab. If I, you feel like I'm the type of person that fits your project, just send me an email, send me a text and we can talk. Awesome. Thank you so much for this conversation. I really, really enjoyed talking with you and I wish you all the best. Like I said, I really like your energy and what you're doing and I think you're just doing a great thing. So I wish you a lot of luck and I enjoyed talking with you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Thank you. you.